Eagle Brook School is a very diverse place with different cultures and nationalities, and there are various prejudices and stereotypes against foreign cultures. Even though it is impossible to abandon all of these prejudices toward all different groups of people, I'll try to explain and clarify certain misunderstandings and common questions about South Korea. A lot of Koreans do study harder than they should. Even in American schools like Eagle Brook School, it is common to see Koreans studying hard during classes and study halls. It is even more common to see them studying during the vacations, and some people call them tryhards and do not understand their working amount. However, there are historical background and reasoning behind such behavior. First, let's go back to 1945. Korea was starting to divide into two countries, the South and the North. Then the Korean War began and had a ceasefire. But by the end of the war, South Korea was heavily damaged in countless aspects. However, the major problem was that they were out of money and had no ways to earn money. Most men were injured and unable to work from the Korean War, and the country did not have any resources to sell for money. Therefore, there was only one option for them to raise the Korean economy again, to study. Until nowadays, my ancestors have received the maximum amount of education that they could in order to bring the Korean economy up, and this behavior has been continued almost as a tradition. Now, even Korean students who do not want to study are in a situation where they are forced to study because others are doing too. The ongoing war between South Korea and North Korea has been a hot issue throughout the world recently, after, especially after a very gentleman-like argument between Donald Trump and Kim Jong-un, the supreme leader of North Korea. North Korea and South Korea are currently in a ceasefire agreement. However, the tension has been rising extraordinarily in the fa past few months due to Donald Trump's provocation and many people worry about the continuation of the war. Many students here have asked me whether I have any plans regarding the re-beginning of the war, but ironically, a lot of people in South Korea do not really worry about this. This situation may have frightened many Koreans many years ago, but after 70 years, people have rather become aloof about it. In fact, there actually have been several occasions where Kim Jong-un has attempted to fire missiles at Seoul, the capital of South Korea, but barely anyone even attempted to escape. Fortunately, all missiles have turned out to fail, which also may be, may be the reason why people are not scared. Ultimately, in reality, most people in Korea do not even have sufficient finances to plan to escape Korea once the war breaks out. Another stereotype of Koreans is that we eat dogs. When I introduced my three puppies, Apple, Cherry, and Mango, surprisingly and sadly, people often ask me if I named my dogs as names of fruits because I was going to eat them. The answer is obviously no, and to my knowledge, there are no Koreans here who practice such diets. Dog meat is one of the most controversial foods in South Korea. Many people throughout the world do not understand and are horrified by such diet. Also, most of the younger generations in South Korea feel the same way. Boshintang, a Korean soup with dog meat as its primary ingredient, has also originated from the past when Koreans did not have anything to eat. They did not have cows or pigs to eat, and the only meat source that they had were dogs. Therefore, it was an inevitable decision for them to eat the dogs for survival. This practice of eating dogs has been continued on until nowadays. That is why most cities in Korea still permit the practice of eating dogs or boshintangs. Even though majority of the population do not practice such diet, they also see no reason why they should stop others from eating dogs. One thing you have to know though is that there are dogs that are raised for eating. It is not that people steal others' pets and cook with them, so these dogs that Koreans eat are no different from edible cows and pigs. Despite all the efforts that have been made to prevent this system, Korea has not been banning this diet for this reason. Another stereotype towards Koreans is that they are good at games. 
If you play games such as League of Legends or Overwatch, you need to know about South Korea. In other words, in the professional gaming world, South Korea has taken over top places in, in various famous games. All this success in gaming was only possible because of the Koreans' love towards gaming. As you may know, South Korea is a very small country with a size of 38,691 square miles. This means that 100 South Koreas can fit in Canada. Due to such small size, it is very hard for students to enjoy recreational sports or any outdoor activities during their free time. That is also why students began to look for fun, sedentary activities, which is gaming. As the number of student gamers increased, a thing called PC Room, also known as Cyber Cafe, was invented. PC Room is a room that is designed for gaming. The main compositions of the room are computers and fast internet. Then there are food and other services that customers might want while gaming. In there, students gather together and enjoy different games with their friends. This may seem like a fun paradise to be in, but it also has some drawbacks. A lot of people are getting addicted to gaming, which is becoming an unhealthy lifestyle. People in Korea refuse to get out of PC rooms for days, and sometimes even suffer death from malnutrition. Gaming is a good way to relieve one's stress, but it is also significant to balance your life and keep it healthy. There are also other Korean traditions that are not well known, but is not understandable to many other cultures. Significance of age is critical in South Korea, whereas it is not as important here. It is, the, it is part of the Korean tradition to respect the age difference, which may even be a year. If you do not, you're considered impolite and can be criticized by others around you. In Korea, there are different languages that you use to different people. If you're talking to someone who is slightly older than you, you would speak normally. On the other hand, if you're talking to a person who is much older than you, you would speak differently as you would generally put the word yo at the end of every sentence you say. By putting the word yo, you're expressing, the res you're, you're expressing respect to that person. There are many traditions or prejudices that are different in Korea, and I believe there are countless of them in other cultures too. As you study at Eagle Brook and proceed to a secondary schools, you will be placed in more situations where you need to collaborate with people who are different from you. I recommend that you do not try to avoid them or disdain them just because of your differences. Try to understand their differences and they'll do the same. Thank you.